The following is a paid program sponsored by the friends and partners of Faith Life Now. Welcome to the program today, a dynamic woman of God, zeal, energy. I don't know how many words to describe you, Lisa. <laughs> you are like so out there, and I just love you. Thanks for being here today. Let's get so right good to have you. Let's Thank get you right for being with us. Okay. Wow. We're at the So Get This Women's Conference, and Lisa has just rocked our socks off with yes. the most amazing message. I feel so empowered. I'm ready to just go out with my boxing gloves. So, That's Lisa, right. you've written a book called Lioness Arising, Wake Up and Change Your World. Mm. What inspired the lioness thing? Well, you know, it was really an interruption into my safe, small world. I went to sleep one night, a large pregnant woman, and I woke up in the middle of this vivid night vision that challenged everything normal about my life. I found this magnificent lioness. She was laying on top of a platform of stone, and I looked at her, and I realized that she was more alive than me, even though she hadn't moved. And it began to enlarge something in my life, and God began to say to me, with the birth of your son, you will awaken a lioness. And let me just tell you something. It took me on a journey of studying the lioness. And just as there is no creature that makes a man prouder to be male than the lion, there is no creature that makes me prouder to be female than the lioness. They are strategic. They hunt together. Mm. They live in the light. They hunt in the dark. They get it that their strength is for service. And they honor who they are by honing their strength with something called prowess. And it's mm. an awesome, awesome wow. study on what God is beginning to do with his daughter daughters all over the face of the earth to raise them up in strength and vibrant beauty. Mm. I love it. I That's love good. it. What are you seeing God do in women all over the world? I know you travel everywhere. You've authored so many books, all kinds of things on television. You're an amazing, dynamic woman, but you weren't always this woman, were you? <laughs> no, 17 years ago, I was a very frightened uh, pastor's wife that was just hoping to hide behind everything. But you know what happens is God cares about people. And I know that for a long time, religion has seemed to only care about its institution, but God really cares about people. Yes. And, mm -hmm. and when I began to have my heart break over what God's heart breaks about, I decided it wasn't right for me to be safe when so many people were at risk. And I said, all right, God, you can do whatever you want with my life. And in particular, I remember sitting, and I know this is, sounds wrong, but sitting on my toilet, we all do it, sitting on my <laughs> toilet and saying, God, you know what? Uh, flipping through a magazine, and I read about sex trafficking for the first time, and I was mm, horrified. Yes. It was back in 19... I think that's where uh, I was 2005, the first time I read about it, too. Yeah, 2005, <laughs> and I said, oh my gosh, sex trafficking is going on. How did I not know this? Yeah. Yes. How, how am I so... Uh, safe from the world and not not broken over this. And I cried out on my toilet, God, if you can do anything with me, I'd love to be a solution with this. And two weeks later, I got a phone call from an organization that said, we are sending somebody over into Thailand to really look into the sex trafficking thing. And the only person we could think of was you. You know, all wow. we have to do is say, I'll do something. Yes. I don't even know what that something is, but That's I right. will do something. I will have a constructive response to this. And we can't do everything, but we certainly can do something. And yes, even can. if we just create awareness or have generosity response. And so this book was a wake up call mm -hmm. to let women know they, they have an ability to do something that is both far and near. Let me just tell you something. Just as no creature makes a man prouder to be male than a lion, there is no creature that makes me prouder to be female than the lioness. They hunt together. They're strategic. They greet and groom each other. They don't think what looks bad on you makes me look good. They think what looks bad on you makes me look bad. They understand their strength is for service. They conceive and actually give birth at the same time because they know that cubs of the same age have a better chance of survival. They nurse and train each other young, and they live as a collective group of females that are related, aunts, mothers, grandmothers, sisters, daughters. And they all understand that they have a skill that's entrusted to them. And they hone that skill to magnificent perfection for the benefit of all. They live in the light, but they hunt in the dark. Don't be fooled by the hot air balloon. This is all beautiful 
and attractive and welcoming because we want to nurture you in a safe environment. But it is very unsafe out there. And there is an urgency that you get the weight of what is going on in here because of the need of what needs to happen out there. And we must be a people who understand, yes, we're lovely, yes, we're beautiful, yes, we're princesses, but we need to stop twirling in our tiara. And remember that there are people out there that are just as precious as you are, and they are waiting to hear the gospel. And our daughters and sisters that are in Islam need to hear the gospel. So we need to be women who begin to stretch forth. So, I'm not saying the U.S. military is the smartest or sharpest knife in the drawer, but if they have figured out that without the involvement of women, you can wage war, but you can never win it, then it is time that the Church of Jesus Christ realizes that without the involvement of women, we can begin to wage war, but we will never win it until we have what was lost in the garden. Could you put up the picture of the two lions for me, Jim? I'm going to show a picture of what I believe is Satan's nightmare. And that is men and women, face to face, strength to strength. Lions do not dominate lionesses. They dominate other lions for the right to enjoy the benefit and the provision of the lioness. The lioness provides and the lion protects. And it is time that we remember, but back in the garden, God did not give Adam and Eve dominion over each other. They gave them dominion over everything under their care. And he said the two of them together was very, very good. This is the kind of thing that we need to realize is the enemy's nightmare. And so he sexualizes the women and he dishonors the men. But there is a generation rising up that will take back their wisdom and take back their virtue and begin to honor the men. <laughs> Ralph Waldo Emerson said, nature is made to conspire with spirit to emancipate us. I love that. There is a conspiracy, but it is to not bind you. It is to free you. So I'm going to share some <clears throat> lion and lioness insights with you because I believe if I can take you outside of what you've known and open your eyes to see something at another parameter, then it will give you some vision to see yourself differently. I watched every possible thing I could get my hand on. It would have been so nice for Disney to have made African cats before my book came out, but I did watch it when I was heading down to New Zealand recently. But I watched Blue Earth, Planet Earth, all the DVDs I could get my hands on. And on one of them, there was a story of how they had problems because the lions were hunting the cattle and the sheep in South Africa. And so they took all of the lions into captivity and they built a reserve where they could reintroduce them later. And how many of you know that would take a long time to build a reserve that could be that large and fenced in for these lions? And so a generation was born, not in the wild, but in captivity. And when it came time to reintroduce this generation into the wild, they built an enclosure onto the fence, rolled the fence back, and expected them to be like, awesome, this is great. But they didn't move. Actually, they moved back. They cowered in the back of the enclosure. And the warden said, okay, what are we going to do? We're going to stop feeding them. And we're going to create a hunger in them. And then they killed a buck, and they put it downwind of the lions. And I already told you the lionesses are the hunters. The alpha lioness, she began to pace back and forth, back and forth, back and forth on what had been that line. And I don't know what happened, but sometime or something caused her to cross that line when her hunger exceeded her hesitation she decided she had to do what she was created to do. She crossed the line. As soon as she crossed the line, she glanced back at her lioness sister that was still hesitating. Like, come on, it's all good. And the second lioness leapt over, and they both looked back at the lion. He was like, mm -mm, I'm not going. He stayed in the bush, afraid of the unknown. 
They come up on the buck, they circle it a couple times, they smell it, they decide it's good, and then they do the most curious thing. They don't eat it. They grab a hold of it, and they drag it back to the hesitant lion, waiting in the enclosure. I was in awe. See, they honored the lion he one day would be, instead of dishonoring the one he was in that moment. We need to learn something from the lionesses, and that is that no act of honor is ever lost in translation. And we, the church, must speak of our destiny and what will be instead of criticize what should be. And we must be people who speak life and blessing and strength instead of nag and judge and criticize. It is time that the church be interpreters of light instead of interpreters of darkness. <laughs> Second Corinthians 6, verses 11 through 13 in the message says, I can't tell you, and I just need to let you know this is Paul. I can't tell you how much I long for you to enter this wide, open, spacious life. We didn't fence you in. The smallness you feel comes from within you. Your lives aren't small, but you are living them in a small way. I'm speaking to you as plainly as I can and with great affection. Open up your lives. Live openly and expansively. God does not save you to tame you. And God does not reveal himself as limitless to limit you. God creates oceans so that we can play in something that has the ability to kill us. God creates mountains so that we lift our vision up. When I ride my motorcycle in the mountains, it just does something inside of me where pretty soon I'm just like screaming at the awe of God. There is something so exciting recreating on the edge of life and death. And you were not made to live safe or small or tame. You were made for a generation of signs and wonders and miracles. And you are not for escape. You are for adventure. Every mother has one mission, to protect her family. But when the distractions of life interfere with that mission, we can get off course. We start living in a world of doubt, unforgiveness, fear, regret, and jealousy. We were not created to live in that world. We are lionesses. We are mighty. We are brave, and we are so ready to rise. For a gift of $29 to the ministry, Drenda would like to send you Lisa Bevere's book, Lioness Arising, and the So Ready to Rise DVD, where Drenda speaks about letting go of all that is holding you back and keeping you down in life. In these two empowering resources, learn how you can take power over anything that is preventing you from rising and becoming the lioness God created you to be. Call 1-877-894-3848 or go to drenda.com and receive these valuable resources and get back to the mission God designed for you. Heroes. People of virtue, people of valor. Heroes are everywhere, within every beating heart. They are sleeping giants that rise and awaken to the cry of injustice, when righteousness is but a whisper. Why do heroes only awaken in the darkest hour? Why do we look to others to do something when we ourselves are that sleeping giant? It's time to awaken the hero within. You were not made to live safe or small or tame. You were made for a generation of signs and wonders and miracles. You were created as a unique, unique creation of God. You are special. You are blessed to do something great in this earth. You are a hero that is ready to rise. Jesus already did it. He already finished it. He already whipped the devil. He already beat the devil. You just have to fight from the place of victory to enforce what is already yours in Christ Jesus. If ever there comes a time when the women of the world come together, 
purely and simply for the benefit of mankind. It will be a force such as the world has never known. Make sure you're here September 11th through the 13th for the So Get This Women's Conference, Supernatural Women. Go to drenda.com and register today for only $59. Transform every area of your life and become a force to be reckoned with as you discover and awaken the hero within. Go to drenda.com and register right now. The world is waiting. Well, they followed this lion and his two lionesses for a while, and he'd settled his pride territory with the help of his lionesses. But lions will attack each other according to their main width, and he had a collar on him. And so the other lions were attacking him and attacking him and attacking him. And so the warden said, you know what, we need to go in there, we need to take off that collar. And so these guys, they all get on those vehicles, they're driving into this range, and they come up on this lion, they see him in the distance, they shoot him with a tranquilizer gun. And he just looks at him like, are you serious? And he keeps walking with the dart just swinging from his hip. And they were like, this is like super lion. We we're going to have to shoot him again. So they shoot him again. He goes down, incapacitated, but not unconscious. They drive up on him. Yeah, you got that. They got up on him, and they were just getting ready to jump off the vehicle. When up pops the lioness, they hadn't seen her because the lionesses are stealth. And she began to pace back and forth in front of her front fallen lion. And I heard the narrator say to get to him. We will have to tranquilize her. And when I heard to get to him, we will have to tranquilize her. I thought that is what the enemy has been doing since the beginning of time. To get to the men, he tranquilizes the women. And he doesn't tranquilize the women with inactivity. He tranquilizes the women with getting them absorbed with their everyday busy life. So they shoot her. She goes down incapacitated and not unconscious. And the whole time they're checking her, checking her teeth and stuff, he's growling in the background, trying to find his feet. They get a little nervous. They get back on the vehicle. They put it in reverse. They back it up as fast as they can. They get on the open road and they begin to drive. And I hear the narrator say, I'm so glad we got out of there. Because there is nothing more dangerous than being in the presence of lions when they are fully awake. And when I heard the pairing of dangerous and fully awake, I thought, is the church of Jesus Christ dangerous and fully awake? Are we incapacitated and talking in our sleep? Could it be God is saying to you and me, look at the lioness, timid, frightened daughters. Watch her closely and learn. She knows who she is. She knows what she was created to do. She knows her strengths and she hones them to honor her creator. She understands the borders and the boundaries of her realm and she rules it. While I was on this journey of studying the lioness, I had an amazing opportunity. I got to actually go on a safari. And I have to tell you, I thought I was going to hate it. It was like, get up at 4.30 a.m., go to bed at 8. I was like, that sounds horrible. And no TV, no phones. It was my favorite thing I've ever done in my life. And there was this one lioness and her three cubs that we'd been following for three days. She had two daughters and one son. And on the third day, we came up on her. She came up right on my side of the vehicle. And I felt like she was saying goodbye to me. I felt like she wanted to bond with me. And so I let her head go by. I let her back go by. And when she was just her lower back right there, I reached my hand out. And I was just going to pet her. When I heard John Bevere say, absolutely not. <laughs> I had to pull my hand in and imagine the conversation I would have had with the lioness if John would not have interrupted her. I believe I would have stroked her gently. And she would have flipped around and she would have said, Lisa. And I would have said, Lioness. And then she'd say, do you want to see what I can do? I'd be like, girl, you show me. She'd release her claws. And she'd say, with these claws, I can take down an impala 
and feed the entire pride. Then she'd retract them, and she'd show me velvet. And she'd say, and with this paw, I tenderly train up the young, male and female, to be mighty. Then she'd stretch out to take a 20-hour nap. But before she fell asleep, she would say to me, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And you and I have no problem believing that the lioness is in fact the sum of fear and wonder. But that is not who that scripture was talking about. Psalm 139, 14 says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works. The lioness knows her magnificence is revealed in her strength. It is captured in what she was created to do, not in what she looks like. Because when my children, who are just natural children, deny their potential, their strength, their talent, I don't feel complimented as their mother. I feel insulted. I stand here in front of you and I look beyond the expanse of all of you guys. And the truth is, not one of you are the same. And you know what? You're not supposed to be. We're supposed to vary in age. We're supposed to vary in the way we look. We're supposed to celebrate our differences because differences make people dependent on each other. And so we need to be people who begin to live this out. And like the lioness and any woman and any church probably needs to be a collection of contradictions. We need to be powerful. We need to be focused. We need to be nurturing. We need to be highly skilled. We need to be playful. And we need to be deadly. Not to each other. We're going to stop that nonsense but to the enemy's plan. I think the feminists told you and I growing up that if we wanted to be powerful as women, we needed to be men. Right. But right. the truth is, I don't want to be a man. And attack men. Uh, exactly, and that men were the enemy. But men and women are not enemies, they're right. allies. And we are made to build together, and yes. both are better together than either of them are yes. separately. Yes. And so I think a whole generation of younger girls that are coming up right now, they said, I, I don't want to hate men. Exactly. I want to do life with yes. men. And I want to know what that looks like to do it well. Mm -hmm. Yes, and That's it's right. a beautiful picture. What are you seeing as a result of this book all over the world? And what are you seeing changing in the climate with women? Well, I'm, I'm seeing it change. I mean, I've seen this in Russian, it's in German, it's in French, it's in Spanish, it's in English, and it's in one other country, I can't remember. But what is happening is women are beginning to find out that they have value, that they have voice, and that they can actually use their influence. If they know what is going on, they can actually do something. That's not just sex trafficking. I'm seeing women do things everywhere that they can begin to build the lives of others, that they can work together with each other, and that they can celebrate each other's strengths. I love this about the lioness. They actually groom each other. And we need to be women who, who understand that what is beautiful on you is actually beautiful on me. Yes. And that your beauty doesn't detract from mine. And that ultimately the truth is all of our beauty is reflected not in the mirror, but in what we leave behind and what we impart into the lives of others. And I think a generation of women are beginning to hone their strength and understand their beauty is in their, their substance and their ability and not in their form. That's beautiful, right. beautiful. That's We're right. not comp competitors. We are complementers of each other's giftings. It's beautiful. Would you pray with the women right now and just impart that lioness anointing? And you've got to get her book, Lioness yes, Arising. Awesome. There's a whole curriculum for young women yes. and any women, right, of all ages, because it's about all the women coming together around the men of God and encouraging them to, right? Yeah, it's all hands on deck in these last yes, hours. Yes. You know, I'm going to just pray this quote over you. Matthew Arnold said, if ever there comes a time when the women of the world come together purely and simply for the benefit of mankind, it will be a force such as this world has never known. I believe you know. I believe you know that God has something inside of your life. I think you're not here by accident. I believe you're listening to us because there is a longing for purpose. There is a longing for something more. And may that God gifted treasure in you begin to be stirred up. May you understand what is the talent, what is the gifting. May you have relationships that begin to build you and not tear you down. May you be a woman who understands your value in God and your value in relationship with companies, with other women. And may you find the women that God has put you with that will build up your life. And may you be a builder in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. That's great. Yes. That's a declaration over your life, for your life. You're not alone. There is a God that loves you, 
and you do not have to fight and rebel against men to find love, to Amen. find what you're looking for. It's not his fault. It's not her fault. God's got a way to make it happen, doesn't there's, he? There's Absolutely. so much more in this. You've got to get this book. It is amazing. And um, we want to just thank you so much for sharing this message with women. It is so needed. Yes, thank, thank you. you. It was an honor. Thank, thank you, you, Lisa. God bless you and yes. hope you'll come back again. Thank you. Every mother has one mission, to protect her family. But when the distractions of life interfere with that mission, we can get off course. We start living in a world of doubt, unforgiveness, fear, regret, and jealousy. We were not created to live in that world. We are lionesses, we are mighty, we are brave, and we are so ready to rise. For a gift of $29 to the ministry, Drenda would like to send you Lisa Bevere's book, Lioness Arising, and the So Ready to Rise DVD, where Drenda speaks about letting go of all that is holding you back and keeping you down in life. In these two empowering resources, learn how you can take power over anything that is preventing you from rising and becoming the lioness God created you to be. Call 1-877-894-3848 or go to drenda.com and receive these valuable resources and get back to the mission God designed for you. Heroes, people of virtue, people of valor. Heroes are everywhere within every beating heart. They are sleeping giants that rise and awaken to the cry of injustice when righteousness is but a whisper. Why do heroes only awaken in the darkest hour? Why do we look to others to do something when we ourselves are that sleeping giant? It's time to awaken the hero within. You were not made to live safe or small or tame. You were made for a generation of signs and wonders and miracles. You were created as a unique, unique creation of God. You are special. You are blessed to do something great in this earth. You are a hero that is ready to rise. Jesus already did it. He already finished it. He already whipped the devil. He already beat the devil. You just have to fight from the place of victory to enforce what is already yours in Christ Jesus. If ever there comes a time when the women of the world come together purely and simply for the benefit of mankind, it will be a force such as the world has never known. Make sure you're here September 11th through the 13th for the So Get This Women's Conference, Supernatural Women. Go to drenda.com and register today for only $59. Transform every area of your life and become a force to be reckoned with as you discover and awaken the hero within. Go to drenda.com and register right now. The world is waiting. <laughs>